In this video, I'll look at the distinction in NXCAN between groove machining and T-slot machining. Although they both use the same tool, you're going to want to use a different approach. The groove is shown here on the outside of the part, and of course here's our T-slot. Before we start with the cam side, let's look at what's already been created. I've got a mill in here that we'll use for roughing out this slot in a second, and then the T-cutter. The only thing I really want to mention about the T-cutter is that it does generate system tracking points for you. So if I go to the More tab and hit Tracking Points, we see those listed here. The one I'm mostly interested in is the SysOD bottom. That's the one we'll use, but there's also a SysOD here at the top. When we machine the groove, we won't be using those tracking points. Let's start here with Create Operation, and the Groove Milling command is part of Mill Planer. I do have a stock set up. We're just billing, uh, I'm sorry, machining a billet. And so you see the stock here to the outside. The main thing we need to do is specify our groove geometry. And we'll do that just by picking an individual face. And what happens in the background is it recognizes the groove and then shows us using the uh, kind of purple outline where the machinable material is. Also, we see something important here in the dimensions. It's understands that the depth of that slot is 0.27. Well, our tool is 0.25, so that means we'll need multiple passes in Z. The passes that you see here, though, are actually in the XY direction, so I'm going to change that to 1. Then let's uh, generate. And we see that we do have our two passes shown here. Now let's do a quick verification. It's coming back for its second pass here. Speed this up a little bit. The main thing we might note there is that it's conventional cutting. If we wanted to fix that, We'd go to Cutting Parameters and in the Strategy page, change that to Climb Cut. After we regenerate, we see that reverse. Let's click OK. Before I move on, though, I do want to show you one thing. If I go to the Machining Feature Navigator, we see a new object here that we didn't think we created, maybe. It's the Slot Rectangular, and in fact, when we were in that dialog box for groove machining and we selected ge the geometry, it created this object for us in the background. And that's helpful because if we have to go back with another tool and pick up this groove again, it's already identified for us as a groove. But let's move on, though, to the machining of our T-slot itself. So we need to start with this mill and rough it out. I'll choose Create Operation again. But here we begin with the four wall and IPW Choose our tool. And we'll specify cut area floor. This should be the only geometry we need. This may seem counterintuitive, but NX will figure out that it can't actually machine under that overhang with the mill. In fact, right here in the green region, it's figured out what it can actually machine. I will change to a zigzag, though. Hit generate. And there's our toolpath. If I want to verify this, I can choose Display Resulting IPW and just kind of double check that, in fact, it is taking those two walls to finish, finish, which is what I want. OK, now it's time to continue. It's back to create operation again, but we are not going to choose groove milling this time. And the reason is that the groove is going to have a hard time if it sees two grooves opposing each other. That kind of confuses the way it looks at roughing and finishing material. So we want this command, planar profile. We'll choose the T-cutter. And this time, uh, we are going to use a drive point. But before we get to that, let's actually choose our part boundary. This is kind of the, the tricky part of this command in that we have only a single linear move that it needs to make. 
So it could potentially get confused about which plane we want to be on. The way to solve that is just to change to specify and then specify our plane. This is going to be an open boundary. And uh, I'll get back to this guy in a second here. But under select curve, I'm going to choose this curve. So I'm going from green to red. You see the little arrow indicating the direction of travel. So my tool wants to be on the left side of this curve. So I'll change that right here. Then we'll click OK. So we have our geometry specified, but we haven't indicated how we want the tool to map to that. And that's when we get to the drive point. Remember those uh, tracking points I pointed out to you earlier? Well, this is they've come through into the operation, and I want to choose SysOD bottom. So let's generate. And I do get what looks like a correct toolpath here, but I sure don't like this arc, lead in, and uh, engage. So let's go back to non-cutting moves. And what we're going to need to do then is just change the default. Now, of course, if I'd set up a, a template file, um, I could have had that come up automatically. But what I'm demonstrating to you today is NX uh, just as it functions out of the box. So out of the box, this planar profile command uses the arc right here under engage type. We'll change that to linear. Click OK, and we'll regenerate. OK, just as a quick validation, let's run through this one more time. So we see it's roughed out, and then our single pass to uh, put the T-slot in. OK, again, the distinction between grooves and T-slots. If you have a T-slot, you're going to want to use that planar profile command if you've got a, a groove on the outside, you're going to use your groove milling.